The trade that you see on the screen is one of the most profitable ways that I have found to trade in any market. And that is by trading trend continuation pullbacks. And the reason these trades are so profitable is because you can normally get a very limited risk on these trades with a potentially unlimited reward if price does continue in that trend. Now, there is a very specific way to utilize these pullback trades in order to make profit, and there are a few detrimental mistakes that most traders are making. So that is why in this video, you are gonna get a complete guide to pullback trading. You are going to learn the top mistakes that you must avoid in order to make money from trading pullbacks. And you are going to get a full rules-based trading strategy that I utilized to get into the trade you see on the screen right now and that I use in my own trading on a daily basis. So if that sounds good, then go ahead and click that like button for me. Go ahead and subscribe if you are new. And I'll be right back after the intro and disclaimer. Welcome back and let's go ahead and get started first by assessing what a pullback actually is. Now, in order to understand that, you have to understand what a candlestick chart is. A candlestick chart is a visual representation of the decisions made by all market participants on a specific asset. Right now, we're looking at the Canada Yen on the chart. So what this means on the Canada Yen is that we have had more buyers than sellers when price is pushing up to a new high, we then have a slow in demand for the Canada Yen causing a pullback, and that's all the pullback is, is a slow in demand, followed by buyers taking back control, more market participants wanting to buy this asset than sell it, followed by, yet again, another decrease in demand. And this goes on and on while we see prices in an uptrend. And these pullbacks occur due to many things, one of which is people that bought down here, are now going to be taking profit. The other is that other traders, other market participants may think this is a great level for a possible reversal and they may sell. But as long as buyers continue taking control at higher prices than the previous lows, then we continue to have an uptrend. And obviously prices need to break the previous highs for this to be an uptrend as well. But that's something really important for you to understand as we move forward in today's video. So with this being an uptrend, what do you think the best place to buy would be in this uptrend? Well, it's always going to be the bottom of this pullback. So what we do in order to trade pullbacks successfully is we wait on a identifiable trend that needs to be very clear. We'll talk more about that in just a second. We wait on this identifiable trend where prices are making higher highs and higher lows. We then wait for a pullback and as this pullback is happening, we're trying to find the very bottom of the pullback. So what we want to do is wait for this pullback to start and then wait for buyers to start taking back control. And when we have a situation where price is in an identifiable uptrend, meaning we're making higher highs along with higher lows compared to the previous lows, and then we wait for this pullback and also have the patience to wait for buyers to start taking back control. That is when we give ourselves the best odds of having winning trades while trading pullbacks. Now, that was just the most simple explanation of pullback trading that you need to know before we move forward. Throughout this video, you are going to learn how I find the bottom of pullbacks in the most accurate way to provide me with profitable trading opportunities. Now, before we dive into the full strategy, let's talk about the top detrimental mistakes you must avoid while trading pullbacks if you ever hope to trade them profitably. So the first mistake is trading pullbacks when price is not in trend. I see this all the time. A trader will send me an email and go, hey, look, we have this push up and now we have a pullback and we have buyers taking back control. Should I buy here? The answer is no, there is no trend here. Yes, we had to push higher, but when you're trading pullbacks, you want to trade the pullback directly after a new high. What I mean by that is price would have needed to create a brand new high compared to this previous high before you looking for a possible pullback entry on this specific trade. So a simple rule of thumb for this is you always wanna be trading a pullback after a brand new high has been created. As we can see here, push up, pullback, push up to what? A brand new high. Then we have a pullback, push up to another brand new high, followed by a pullback. Now is when you can start looking for possible trading opportunities after, and I mean directly after, a brand new high. This is extremely important because it's what's gonna give us the best odds of winning trades while we're trading pullbacks. 
The second biggest mistake I see is traders trying to place trades using pullbacks without seeing buyers or sellers taking back control at the end of the pullback. To give you an example of that, take a look at the chart now. We have a defined downtrend that's pretty clear here. We then have a pullback and we have this little tiny red candle. Now this would not be considered a lot of selling pressure. The body of this candle is tiny. So this would not be the confirmation I need. I wanna see that sellers are really planning to take back control whenever I'm trying to trade the top of a pullback in a downtrend. So this tiny candle would not be that. This would not be very good confirmation that sellers are taking back control and not waiting for that confirmation puts you in a position to end up with a losing trade. And the third and final mistake that I see most often is traders trying to take pullback trades too early and with zero other confluence. So this would be an example of that. We have a nice uptrend here followed by a pullback and a green candle, but this pullback is really shallow. Not only that, there is no other confluences aligning with this trade. And when trading pullbacks with no other confluence, you are very unlikely to be profitable consistently. So those are the three mistakes you must avoid if you wanna be profitable trading pullbacks. Now, let me talk about how I utilize pullbacks to actually place trades. And what I'm gonna be showing you now is the most accurate way I've found to know when the end of the pullback is going to occur. I do this by utilizing a full rules-based trading strategy that you're gonna learn right now. The first trade we're gonna look at is one you've already seen at the very beginning of this video, on the Euro Aussie and on this trade where price is right now, would you consider this to be in a downtrend? Hopefully you were able to say yes. We have a very clear move pushing lower, making a new higher low and a new lower low, causing this to be now in a downtrend. So that is always the first step in any trade. This is obviously a bearish version of this trade where we would be looking for sell trades with this strategy. And the very first step will always be identify the trend of the market. So in this case, we're in a downtrend. Now, what's next? I obviously wanna see the start of a pullback. If I'm gonna find the top of the pullback and try to place a sell trade, so we wanna see a pullback start. Now, after this, we're gonna avoid that second mistake I talked about by combining this pullback with multiple areas of confluence. So for me, the most important things I look at in my trading are structure and trend. And since we already have the trend identified, the next thing I wanna do is look left and find an area of structure that's been tested multiple times. So this is one of the ways I identify where a pullback is likely to end and where we're gonna start seeing sellers take back control in this market. Now, that's not all I'm looking for. That's just the first two steps of this strategy. Next up, I want this pullback to get very close to or touch the 50 period exponential moving average. This moving average can act as resistance in a downtrend, as you can see, looking left. And when combined with a structure level that's been tested multiple times, it's shown to give me more accurate trading opportunities. So I love it whenever I see this, whenever I see price coming to the 50 EMA while also being at a level of structure that's been tested multiple times while also being in a confirmed downtrend, this is my best case scenario for possible pullback trades. And the way that I trade, the way that I create strategies is through a process that I call CEST. CEST stands for conditions, which are all the things I need to see before I look for a possible entry reason when trading a strategy. And then obviously after the conditions, an entry reason followed by stops and targets. What you've just learned, the market being in an identifiable trend, market being at a level of structure that's been tested multiple times, and the market pushing against the 50 EMA would all fall under the category of conditions. Now, after conditions, I don't just place random trades. What is it I said that I wanted to see at the end of pullbacks? So these conditions are the first step, but at the end of pullbacks, I want to see bears in this case, or sellers start taking back control to show me that we have a high likelihood of continuing this downtrend because if bears never take back control, then this could easily be a reversal and markets could go higher. But I want to see a candlestick pattern or a combination of candlesticks that show me bears are taking back control. The way that I do this, and I'll zoom in to make this easier to see, but this is one of my favorite ways to identify when bears have taken back control after a pullback. So as you can see in this pullback, we have a couple of red candles. You might be saying, well, does that not mean that bears are taking back control? Not for me. The rules-based way I identify this is by looking at the bottom of the last green candle of this pullback, 
Obviously, this is for bearish trades when we're looking at a downtrend and we have green candles in our pullback. I want to look at the bottom of the last green candle of that pullback and I want to wait for a red candle to close below it. Now that can happen in the very next candle. That can take a couple of candles. That can take up to three or four candles. But when a bearish candle closes below the lowest point of the last bullish candle in our pullback, that's when I consider that bears have now taken back control and we're likely to see trend continuation after that. And obviously that's only after all the other conditions I've discussed are met. So in this case, on the Euro Aussie, what did we see? Well, the very next candle, as you can see, closed below the low of the last green candle of the pullback. Again, I hope that's not confusing. We have green candles in our pullback. As you can see, this is our last green candle. This would be the low of it. This red candle did not close below that low. We then have another green candle in our pullback. This is the low of that green candle. This red candle did not close below the low of that green candle. Next up, we have this as the last green candle in our pullback and the next red candle does in fact close below it. That's when I consider that sellers have taken back control. And that's when we actually placed this trade as you saw at the very beginning of the video. And if I go ahead and play forward a bit, you can see that this trade did end up pushing lower and hitting our target at around a two to one reward to risk ratio. Now we're on the New Zealand dollar and we're gonna look at a bias, bias, oh my God. Now we're on the New Zealand dollar. We're going to look at a buy example of this trading strategy. And I want you to tell me, would you be looking for a trade right now? Hopefully you said no. This is one of the mistakes that I talked about. We have a very shallow pullback, no other confluence, and this is not considered buying pressure. There's a long wick to the upside and this is a tiny green body. That's not what we would consider buying pressure and not to mention the other confluences are not met. I'm going to need a bigger pullback to come down into previous structure levels and I'm going to need that to line up with the 50 EMA to create my perfect pullback environment and then I'm going to need buyers to start taking back control utilizing the rules you learned in the last part of this video. So let's take a look at what happens next. As we push forward we do get a bit of a deeper pullback. We then get two green candles. We're not really at structure and we're definitely not at the 50 EMA so this would not be valid either. Instead we push forward and at this point with the pullback getting a little closer to our level of structure I would go ahead and map out that level of structure that I see will likely coincide with the 50 EMA. So now that that's mapped out, we can push price forward a bit more. And right here, do we have a valid bullish version of the strategy based on what you've learned today? Well, let's talk through all the conditions. Are we in a verified uptrend? Yes, we are. That's very easy to see. Prices are in fact making higher highs and higher lows up to this point. Do we have a pullback that comes into a previous level of structure that's been tested multiple times along with hitting or getting really close to the blue line, which is our 50 EMA. The answer to that is also yes. What does that cover? That covers what we call conditions of our strategy. The next thing we want to look for is our entry. And in terms of this video, what have we talked about being the entry? Buyers taking back control, which is going to be defined as a green candle closing above the last red candle of the pullback for a bullish trade. So we have all of that coming together. We have our C, and E in our acronym CEST. Now we just gotta worry about stops and targets. I didn't talk about that in the bearish version, so I'll do it now. In terms of stops and targets, this would be the actual reason I would click the buy button on this particular strategy. My stop loss always goes just below the swing low, wherever that is, before our buyers taking back control. And for a target, most of the time I look for about a 1.4 to one reward to risk ratio. I then move my stop loss to break even and I manage the position as prices head higher by moving my stop loss up to the next swing low as price continues in this uptrend. What that would look like is move my stop to break even, manage my stop loss as we create new swing lows by putting that stop loss under those lows. And I do that until we get to the next major level of structure looking left. For this particular trade, as you can see, price did in fact push up, easily hit what would have been our targets. On the screen right now, we're looking at the Aussie dollar. Tell me, is this a valid trade considering the strategy you've learned throughout this video? Let's go ahead and check off the conditions. Are we in an uptrend? Yes, we've created higher highs and higher lows up to this point. Next up, are we at a previous level of structure that's been tested multiple times? Well, if I draw a horizontal line on the screen, where price is now, yes, we have a level of structure 
that has in fact been tested multiple times. Lastly, for our conditions, are we at or close to the 50 EMA, which is our blue line? Yes, we are right on that blue line. So now we have conditions checked off. Next up is we're looking for the entry reason, which is buyers taking back control. Defined as a green candle that closes above the last red candle of our pullback, that would be right here. So the candle that just formed did in fact conclude that buyers could be taking back control right now. So this is what we would say is in fact a valid trade based on the strategy that you've learned in this video. Let's put our stop loss right there. We'll go with a 1.4 for like initial targets and let's click play. Oh no, what happened? A loss? Yes. Losses are a part of trading. The way that you get good at trading, the way that you become a profitable trader is not by knowing what the market's going to do next. We're not trading when we can see what's going to happen in the future. That would be ridiculous, right? So how do we be profitable even without being able to tell what the market is going to do next? Well, we do that by having a statistic advantage that plays out over a long period of time. So we create a rules-based strategy or learn one like you just did that is proven to give an edge over the market. And then we exploit that advantage over a long period of time, which gives us profits over that period of time in a very similar way to the casino, always having an advantage over the player in 99% of the games at the casino. That's how they make money. The casino doesn't know if they're going to win or lose that specific hand of blackjack. But what they do know is that over time, they do have an advantage and they will come out ahead over a large sample size of blackjack hands. That's exactly what we're doing with a trading strategy. And the way we can see if we do in fact have an advantage is by back testing. So the next step, if this strategy is something you'd like to utilize in your own trading would be to go back test this strategy by taking the rules you've learned for the conditions, entries, stops, and targets and back testing that through each currency pair you would like to trade on the specific time frame you would like to trade. You'll go back and look over the past one to five years at every instance this exact strategy happened. And that will give you the performance of this strategy or at least the performance that's happened in the past. And that's the most accurate measuring stick we have when it comes to trading based around technical analysis. Now on top of doing the back testing to gain confidence and see if this strategy is actually something that proves to give you profits over a long period of time, the next step would be to develop a solid risk management plan. Because again, as I just showed you, you are going to have losses no matter what you trade. Your ability to deal with those losses is going to be a defining factor in whether or not you become a profitable trader. So in order to deal with those losses, what makes it easier to deal with losses? Losing less money. What equals losing less money? Having better risk management, risking less on each of the trades that you place, or at least risking an amount you're comfortable losing on those trades. And so if you enjoyed this video and you want some more information about trading psychology, risk management, and other trading systems and strategies that I personally developed and use, along with having priority email support, which means I'll be answering any of the questions that you have, and if you want to get two to five email analysis trades per week where I send you emails of trades I'm actually placing, then you may enjoy the TTC Forex University. And if you want to learn all the details to that, all you got to do is click the top link in the description or go to www.thetradingchannel.com. If that's not something you're interested in, no big deal at all. Today's video should have given you all the information you need in order to put pullback trading into your arsenal of trading strategies. If you think it did that, go ahead and click that like button for me. Go ahead and subscribe if you're new to keep updated about the content we come out with each and every week. I wish you the best of luck on all your future trades. Trade green, and I'll see you next video.